Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time around, I want to share a technique I've used for years to get lower ISO shots of my wildlife subjects. I call this tip ISO insurance because it involves taking a series of what are essentially insurance shots as we drop our ISO and shutter speed to progressively lower values. Oh, and I have a bonus tip later in this video that takes this technique to another level. Anyhow, usually the situation goes something like this. You have a really cool subject, but the light is failing and your ISOs are on the high side. Naturally, we want the lowest ISO possible, but we also need enough shutter speed to keep the subject sharp. If your subject is relatively still, this technique can often save the day. First, set the lowest shutter speed that you're confident will net you a sharp image and double check that the lens is wide open. The idea here is to get a successful shot first, even if it's a bit noisy. This is our safe shutter speed. For example, let's say it's getting dark and I spot a relatively stationary subject that I just have to send to my memory guard. We'll also say for the sake of this example and to kind of stick with even numbers here, that my safe shutter speed with my 600 f4 on a tripod with a loose gimbal is 1 250th of a second. So I have 1 250th selected, my lens is wide open, but in the dim light my ISO is still at ISO 6400. Ouch! Still, I'll shoot a quick series or two just so I know that I have a sharp photo. Plus, I want to be covered in case the critter runs or flies off. After all, again, I can fix a noisy image, but I can't save a blurry one. Once I'm certain I have my shot, I'll try again, but this time one stop slower at 1 1 25th of a second. This drops my ISO to a more agreeable value of 3200. I'll pop off another series, probably shooting more frames than usual since I know my failure rate is likely going to be higher than at the faster shutter speed. In fact, the lower you drop your shutter speed, the longer your bursts should be. Sure, you'll have quite a few throwaways that show minor motion blur, but you're also far more likely to have a few keepers in there compared to just using short bursts. At this point, if the animal hasn't tired of my shenanigans, I'll probably drop another notch down to 1 60th of a second and repeat, this time enjoying the relatively lower ISO of 1600. If I check and none of the images are sharp at 1 60th, then I'd probably head back up to 1 1 25th of a second and continue to shoot, if the animal is still willing, of course. However, if I still see a handful of sharp images at 1 60th, I'd probably drop a third of a stop at a time, first to 1 50th, then to 1 40th, etc., getting that ISO lower and lower with the goal of getting at or below ISO 1000. At this point, I've dipped pretty far below my minimum safe shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, but I've also been taking insurance shots along the way, so I know I have some nice keepers. Now for the bonus. Another way to make this work is by using Live View with a tripod mounted camera. Start by setting your camera on a secure tripod and use full electronic shutter, silent shooting, whatever mode your camera offers that is the most vibration free. DSLR shooters will want to go into Live View and make sure they are using a shooting mode where the mirror will stay up and not move during exposure. Next, set a delay using either exposure delay mode or a self timer. Note that some newer mirrorless cameras actually allow you to tell the camera to take multiple shots when using the self timer, and I would recommend setting that option to at least three shots as it gives you better odds in case your subject moves a little bit. Still, you can pull this off one shot at a time if you need to. Now, focus using the back LCD. Once everything is perfect, gently trip the shutter. The delay will allow the rig to settle and, as long as your subject doesn't move, this allows you to use shutter speeds that are unthinkable with your hand on the camera. Note that if timing is more critical, a cable release can be handy here. Of course, these techniques aren't for every subject. Obviously, a moving or flying subject usually demands a higher, more appropriate shutter speed, but it does work well on stationary subjects. These tricks also run the risk of the animal doing something kind of cool while you're at a shutter speed way too low to capture it. You know, like maybe you're shooting a bird super slow and it ruffles its feathers or shakes its head or something like that. By the way, the big question I always get about this technique is why not just start at a really slow shutter speed and lower ISO, right? Simple as shutter speed and ISO drop, the failure rate goes up. So if you start with a super slow shutter speed, there's a chance you won't get anything tack sharp at all. It's almost always easier to fix a noisy photo than to fix a shot that's ruined by motion blur. So it's critical that you get a successful shot first. Plus, if you start at a slow shutter speed and realize you're not getting anything sharp, the animal might move or flee before you can correct the error. 
Always start with the slowest shutter speed you absolutely know will net you a shot, 1 250th of a second in our example, and only drop your shutter speed after you secure a sharp image. By the way, if you give this a try, you'll want to reverse the typical culling order when you get to your computer. Start with the lower ISO shots and work backward through them. That way, if you find a nice sharp photo at a lower ISO, you don't have to sort through all those higher ISO versions. If you enjoy learning tips and techniques like this, make sure you check out my educational materials. We're talking pages and pages filled with advice just like what's in this video. Check them out and you'll start getting better shots with these field proven techniques the very next time you're out. As always, I hope you'll stop by my site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss one of these videos, one of my articles, workshop opportunities, or any of the other cool stuff that I do and announce. Also, I'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, and get notified. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.